Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Assalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Bismillahirrahmanirrahim So Jazakallah khair uh, Inshallah for all those viewers who are just tuning in We have uh, an excellent lineup of speakers And Inshallah in this session we will have uh, um, Three of those uh, great speakers uh, You know touching upon the subjects uh, Pertaining to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his seerah uh, Next we uh, we have uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Khan uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Khan is a graduate of uh, Islamic University in Medina. Uh, he's currently the chairman of Sharia Council of Ikna and member of the Fiqh Council of North America. And uh, Alhamdulillah, he's also the director of programs in the Tarbiyah Department of uh, Ikna. He will be speaking to us on the topic of why 2 billion Muslims love Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So without further ado, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Khan. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem, Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Rasulillahi Amabad. Thank you very much, Brother Sharik, for that wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, on behalf of Ikna Tarbiya Department, I really sincerely would like to thank all the previous speakers and those still yet to come for their time and their thoughts. May Allah accept it from us. If I repeat something in my talk that has already been said, it is just because we are talking about this great human being, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the final messenger of Allah. So let me begin by um, uh, quoting what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala honors the Prophet Sallallahu by saying, إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. Indeed, Allah confers His blessing upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم upon the Prophet and His angels also ask Him to do so. O you who believe, ask Allah to confer blessings upon him and ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to grant him peace. Dear viewers, dear brothers and sisters, when profanity and comic book distortions by bigots are leveled at the Prophet ﷺ, such as the likes we see in France a month or so ago, it creates much uneasiness across the globe. Almost a quarter of this world's population, or almost two billion Muslims, and I would add even some non-Muslims, are insulted and are highly offended. It is not enough to think that Muslims are reaching or reacting to something about the Prophet because they are intolerant, far from the truth. In fact, it is the faith of two billion Muslims that is attacked and they will not remain silent. They should not remain silent. They will defend the honor of the Prophet wasallam, and of course, we know they will do so in a manner consistent with the teaching of mercy and compassion, as, as our previous speakers have so mentioned, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And you have not been sent except as a mercy to the world. So the question is why? Why this uneasiness of these two billion Muslims? And first off, Loving Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is faith. It's the faith of two billion Muslims. Loving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is an integral part of faith or Iman. Our most revered statement that is repeated daily is the Shahada. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is ingrained in our very DNA as a Muslim. Every second, every second, millions of Muslims around this globe mention his name, whether it is the call to prayer, whether it is the beginning of prayer or the iqama, whether it is during the prayer, like sending salam to Prophet Sallallahu as sometimes called the darood, or even after making wudu, wudu, that we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulu. Prophet said, 
whoever says that فُتِحَتْ لَهُ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ ثَمَانِيَةِ يَدْخُلُ مِنْ أَيِّ هَاشَاء that whoever says that will enter the eighth gate of paradise, whichever one they choose. Our love for the Prophet ﷺ is due to the fact that we are Muslims. Our love stems from the very core of being a Muslim. Our two sources of Islam, mainly the Quran and the Sunnah, or the sayings and the teachings of Prophet ﷺ, direct us towards loving Prophet ﷺ. Allah says in Al-Quran, النبي أولى بالمؤمنين من أنفسهم وأزواجه أمهاتهم The Prophet ﷺ is closer to the believer than their own selves and his wives are their mothers. That's why when we refer to Aisha radiallahu anha, we say Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, or Khadija radiallahu anha, Ummul Mu'mineen Khadija. And so the Prophet ﷺ, this is clear statement which tells us that this it what it takes to be a believer, preferring the Prophet وسلم, even above our own self. And we, we heard many of the stories of the companion, particularly that of Umar ibn Khattab an, of his demonstration of that love. In the Sunnah, on the authority of Anas an, he said that the Prophet وسلم, said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه Min walidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'in that none of you truly believes, meaning that your your iman has not reached that level of perfection until I become dearer to him than his children, his parents, and all of mankind. This hadith reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim. Brothers and sisters, this love is based on the value that the Prophet وسلم, has brought to humanity. This love is not based on blind following dogmas or raw emotions, but it emanates from the fact that the mission he came with was so worthwhile of our love. As Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُوا لَفِي الدُّعَى الْمُبِينَ And I think many of the speakers give different perspective of this particular ayah. My uh, quote here is, this gift of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to humanity. Indeed, Allah conferred a great favor and gift on the believers when he sent among them a messenger and that messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from among themselves reciting unto them his verses purifying them from their sins by following him obeying him and instructing them in the book this is the Quran and the hikmah or the wisdom and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I think some of our our dear speaker spoke to about, about that in length. While before they had been in manifest error. So where would we have been as an individual? Ask ourselves this question. Where would we have been without this guidance, this gift that Allah has given to us? We might have been on the other side also ready to throw, uh, you know, thorns and blasphemy at the greatest benefactor of humanity. If a person thinks of the benefit he has been given through the Prophet وسلم, through whom Allah brought him forth, that you know Allah brings us and shows us that way, the guidance of Prophet وسلم, and can bring him from kufr to iman, from light to darkness, he will realize that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the cause of his soul remaining forever in eternal bliss. And he will understand that this great benefit is greater than anything else. And so he deserves that his share of a person's love should be greater than anyone else. This two billion Muslims come to realize that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their love for him is greater than anything else. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said, the reason why it is obligatory to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to venerate him more than any other person is that we cannot attain the greatest good in this world 
or in the hereafter except at the hands of the Prophet وسلم, by believing in him and by following him. That is because no one can be saved from the punishment of Allah and the mercy of Allah cannot reach him except by means of the Prophet وسلم, by believing in him, loving him, being loyal to him and following him. This is the means by which, and he continues that this is the means by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him from punishment of this world and in the hereafter. This is the means by which he will attain what is good in this world and in the hereafter. The greatest blessing is the blessing of faith, which can only be attained through him, sallallahu alayhi wa and which is more beneficial than his own self and his own wealth. And he is the one by means of whom Allah brings people forth from darkness into light. And there is no other way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a person's self and family. They will not avail him anything before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, the love for this Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stems from the nobility of his character. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not only is the perfect man or the perfect human being but perfection of the human being was embodied in him despite all the trials and calamities failures and successes joys and sorrows that he sallallahu alaihi experienced in this life never for a single day did he buckle under pressure or behaved in an immoral way he was scrutinized both by friends and foes, friends who want to emulate him in everything he does, and foes or enemies who try every means to throw dirt on him, and they could not find any. My dear brothers and sisters, the two billion Muslims love him and admire him for his unblemished character that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the heavens and the earth says, wa innaka la ala Indeed, you Muhammad have the most exalted character. We love him for his selflessness. How many of us worry about somebody else's faith or somebody else's akhirah as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would be so worried about people, what can happen to them if they do not believe in Allah. His sincerity, we love him for his honesty and tr truthfulness, even before prophethood. How great title he had, the Sadiqal Amin, the most truthful, the most trustworthy. Where are our leaders today when it comes to truthfulness? We love him for his simplicity and his dignity, his generosity. When booty will come in, he will give everything with nothing remain for himself. His magnanimity, his ability to forgive the very people who expelled him from his homeland and made several efforts to end his life, how he forgave them. His farsightedness, his love for human and the liberation of, of women, his role as a commander, we love him for the mercy that he brings to us all that exists we love him for his sense of justice we love him as a family man his concern and care for orphans the needy the wayfarer the indigent we love him for his stance in protecting slaves and the downtrodden we left we love him for his kindness to the problem to the animals and to the environment the concern that he shows for those who are weak we love him for the changes he brought about in the lives of people over the last 15 centuries, including our life. And he has given us a clear path to our destination. We love him for his inclusiveness rather, rather than his exclusiveness uh, for those who are marginalized in society. He has made everyone feel so special. Even we are 15 hundred years away from him and we are thousands of miles away from him we still feel so precious to the prophet brothers and sisters all these and more have made up the personality of rasulullah the final messenger of allah we love him because he makes us feel like real human beings and not pretending to be anything else on one hand, he puts us on the road of perfection 
by making us strive for Ihsan, for perfection in what we do. But on the other hand, he shows us to accept our imperfections and work towards rectifying ourselves as repentant servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hopeful of his mercy. He himself exemplified the truthfulness of a human being. When he got the first revelation, he acted so true to that of a human being going through this emotion. He did not rush home breaking, oh, I have good news for you, Khadija. I have so good news. I'm now the messenger of Allah. And he did not go and shouting and, and start celebrating now. I am, you know, this time to be the final messenger of God, but rather being perplexed like any human being would as to what just happened to him. To the point that his wife, Umm Mumineen Khadija radiallahu anha, tried to put everything into perspective and she said, never, by Allah, Allah will never humiliate you. Allah will not disgrace you. You are, you keep good relations with your kith and kin. You help the poor and the destitute. You serve your guests generously and you assist the deserving calamity afflicted ones. Allah will not dis disgrace you for that. Just look at how kind you are. Brothers and sisters, this two billion Muslims love him because his dignity of choosing faith over worldly pleasures. At one point, the Quraysh came to him, offered him wealth. They offered him money. They offered him power. They offered him women. Those who blaspheme the Prophet ﷺ today, how much they are victims and guilty for far less than these. They do not even get offered of these things, but they run after them and they shatter their souls behind them. But Prophet ﷺ turned away from everything that is materialistic for the truthfulness of his faith. This two billion of Muslims love him because he was stand for them, for everyone when, on the day of Qiyamah, when our own near and dear ones will be running away from us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of judgment will represent mankind and plead on their behalf for their imperfections and their weaknesses before the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When all will be running away from us, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will seek intercession on behalf of his followers. He will personally wait and serve the believers to drink from the kawthar. The kawthar is the river uh, of paradise that flows and it, its banks are of gold and its bed is made of pearls and rubies. And that water flows into the hawth or the cistern. And the hadith of Abu Huraira, he tells us that that the Prophet ﷺ said, I will go and prostrate beneath the throne of Allah. Then I will be given the words of praise such that I've never heard before. I was never given that before. And then it will be said, Oh Muhammad, raise your head and ask and it will be given to you. And intercede and intercession will be granted. I will raise my head and I will say, My Ummah. O oh Lord, my Ummah, O oh Lord, my Ummah. And it will be said, O oh Muhammad, admit from among your Ummah those who will not be brought to account from the right hand gate of paradise, and they will share the other gates with other people. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. My dear brothers and sisters, what a moment when everyone will be running away and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be standing there begging Allah for us. He has not seen us, but his love for us, his care for us, his concern for us. He's going to beg Allah for our imperfections to remove any things that we have and to enter us in genital freedoms. In conclusion, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to increase our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We show that love 
in so many ways, just two billion Muslims around this globe show this love in so many different ways. But whatever is said about him, it hurts all of us. May Allah gather us with our beloved Habib, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khairan, Shaykh Abdul Rahman Khan, um, for that very moving discussion. Um, we pray to all, inshallah, that uh, we Allah make us from those that uh, the Prophet intervenes for. Uh, Jazakallahu khairan, everyone, all the speakers. Uh